Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and today is kind of like a semi-sequel uh, to the video we did last week. If you don't remember or just missed it for whatever reason, last week I sent a stock Kerbal X all the way to Paul and Bop and back again just to kind of experiment to see just how far the stock Kerbal X vessel can go. Considering it's only advertised as being able to go to Minmus and possibly Mun, thought it'd be a fun challenge. However, in order to maximize the amount of Delta V I could squeeze out of the Kerbal X, um, I just left some debris in deep space. The, uh, the main, I was about to say the first stage, but the Kerbal X is actually flanked by a few peripheral boosters around the central core, but it's that central core stage I'm talking about. I ejected that whilst on an escape trajectory from Kerbin, so it's now floating around in deep space. And I said that this is a cardinal sin here at Laon Aerospace. We are always on a mission to protect these space dolphins and space polar bears, so we cannot leave debris floating around in deep space. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. If you haven't seen last week's episode though then do click the little card on screen now or using the link in the description I think it was a really really fun mission and I'm quite proud of how the video came out but back to this video I thought it'd be fun to do this with an SSTO just because we can and the booster itself is kind of an awkward shape uh, it's got these giant fins which means it wouldn't fit inside a mark 3 cargo bay so it'd be difficult to try and recover it inside another vessel so I thought what we'll do we'll go up in an SSTO we can then extend the robot arm that you saw me build a second ago that will then grab the uh, the debris a Kerbal can then go out on EVA and uh, then the Kerbal can weld uh, some parachutes some solar panels and a probe core to the booster so that it can deorbit itself we'll also add a little bit of fuel to the spent booster as well just so it has the fuel needed to perform a retrograde burn to um you know re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere because it's currently in space and in Kerbal Space Program, there's no such thing as orbital decay. And um, that's another thing, actually, sort of, <laughs> when I said orbital decay. You might be thinking, hang on, didn't you eject it whilst on an escape trajectory from Kerbin? And I, I thought I did. But when I went to the uh, tracking station and looked for the debris, it's actually still in Kerbin orbit, just. Like its apoapsis is sort of about the point at which Minmus orbits. So I guess if left long enough, it would probably just crash into Minmus or, you know, Minmus would give it a gravity assist and it would crash into the Mun. But just to be safe, we're going to just go and get it anyway. So it's made things a little bit easier. It's a bit easier to get an encounter with things that are in Kerbin's sphere of influence rather than ones outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. But really, it doesn't make a huge difference in all honesty. So I still think this is going to be a fun mission nonetheless. Here you can see our SSTO here is it's ridiculously easy to fly. I probably added too many rapier engines. It's got incredibly high thrust rate ratio. I mean, look how quickly we accelerated all the way to uh, nearly 1,500 meters per second. There we go. The 1.5 kilometer per second mark has been passed. Uh, and now as we pass the 20 kilometer mark altitude, as in 20 kilometers altitude, uh, I like to fire up the nuclear engine just to keep our thrust going. As you can see, the rapiers have now automatically switched to their closed cycle mode of firing as we, as we can, uh, so we can coast the rest of the way to space. Uh, that was a very uh, stumbly sentence, but we got there in the end, I think. Now, I'm not going to use all of the oxidizer on those rapiers. In fact, the EU Light Among You may have noticed whilst building this thing that I have a couple of fuel tanks where I have the fuel reserves disabled, and that's because that's the fuel I'm going to use to resupply the, uh, the Kerbal X booster. I ended up not needing to use all of the oxidizer I had designated for the rapiers themselves. We can use that uh, remainder oxi remaining oxidizer to refuel the booster as well. Um, I apologize by the way, and I kind of already said this last time, but again, some of you might have missed last week's episode. I apologize if I am a little bit more stumbling, there's a bit more ums and ahs and blank moments in this commentary. Um, normally if I have a moment where I stumble or like miss something or something something where I feel like it could have been done better, I generally stop recording, rewind the commentary, press re-record and go again. But I've, I've broken my hand and it's really difficult to edit stuff in Sony Vegas. What I have is I've got a USB trackpad, like a laptop style trackpad and obviously my keyboard and that's it. Using the mouse is very, very difficult and quite frankly, quite painful. So every time I need to do any level of editing or like rewinding, selecting bits of recording to cut out and you know record around, it's really difficult. So I'm, I'm trying to do this whole thing in one take, which is probably not 
um not a great thing to aim for in terms of quality but that that's that's the reality i'm dealing with here guys i'm only human there's only so much i can really i'm really really willing to risk uh, jeopardizing the healing of my broken hand uh, by doing lots of editing so yeah, what are we doing now? Well, I'll tell you. We're going to be doing a, a pro-grade burn. I'm trying to basically... You may have seen what I was doing, but I'll quickly go over what I did because I was talking about... See, this would be a point now where I would cut it right and rewind, but whatever, we'll press on. Uh, what I did was that I, um, I made sure that my SSTO's periapsis was about the same point as the debris periapsis point, and as long as it was kind of close to the ascending node as well. Uh, and then what I did was I created a maneuver node at periapsis and just dragged out on prograde until we got a nice encounter swing around. But I wanted to make sure that the encounter would happen when my orbit was fairly similar to the debris orbit, which you can see there, it kind of is, right? There's not a huge disparity between the two orbits there. Uh, and the reason for this is because that means that it's going to take a minimal amount of uh, change in velocity to match speed with our target. If our orbits were very dissimilar, then it would take a lot to reach the same speed as the debris, as in cancel all of our relative velocity down to zero. But because our um, our orbits are relatively similar, it means we're going at a relatively similar speed. So like, look at that, it's about 50 meters per second. In fact, our relative speed is 52 meters per second at closest point, uh, which is great because it means it's going to be a very small burn. It's going to be easy to get nice and accurate, particularly because the, uh, the nuclear engine has very poor thrust to weight ratio. So that's, uh, that just makes things a little bit easier. It can be hard to get accurate burns in Kerbal Space Program because the maneuver node indicator isn't always particularly accurate. And you don't really have, obviously, the same precision that, like, NASA has. They've got banks of supercomputers, whereas a lot we've just got, like, Pentiums, right? <laughs> anyway, um, from there, now we've got nice and close, about 4.2 meters, uh, 4.2 kilometers separation, which is fairly close. I then just burn towards the target for a bit bring my uh, close encounter nice and well bring the uh, what's it called the encounter nodes nice and close then we can time warp up to that closest approach burn all of our velocity relative to our target again to zero by burning retrograde and then we just r rinse and repeat until we get nice and close to the target booster as you can see while we're burning prograde relative to the target you can see our orbital line is getting closer and closer to um what the debris orbital line is on the map screen which is a uh, which is an indication that we're doing the right thing, basically. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting really, really close. Zero kilometer separation. So from here on out, I'm not going to rely too much on the map screen because the map screen isn't very accurate for anything less than 100 meters. And uh, from 100 meters, you can see the target that you're trying to dock to. So you can just eyeball it. So there we are. There is the booster. And that's what, I <clears throat> that's what I meant earlier when I said that uh, it's kind of an awkward shape. You can't really fit that inside a Mark II, Mark, Mark II, Mark III fuselage, you know, the big cargo bays. Wouldn't really fit in that because of those fins. So uh, I guess we could have had an engineer Kerbal go out and manually remove those fins and put them in a cargo bay. But really, at this point, this is kind of a more fun approach, I think. And I did a booster recovery fairly recently using a Mark III cargo bay. Um, so I thought this would be kind of a fun twist on the old formula. So it's going to get nice and close, and then once we're nice and close, I'm going to kill off all of our target, uh, all of our velocity relative to our target again, which I've now done <laughs> using the nav ball. And then look at that, we didn't have to use our robot arm at all, really. I added loads of gyros and uh, what are they called, hinges and pistons to get, oh, we can grab onto it no matter what our orientation is, and it was actually really, really easy to get, a, to get aligned with it. Now, at this point, I'm just going to time warp up to Apoapsis, just because uh, the booster, we're only going to fit a small probe core and a small battery to it, and that battery will run out of power really, really quickly. I am going to add solar panels, but I've only got two, and it does not they don't always line up with the sun particularly well, and they don't generate very much electricity. So uh, if we just did everything, and then separated the booster, and then time warped the booster up to Apoapsis on its own, there is a risk that it would run out of electricity and then we won't be able to do anything whereas with it still docked to the space plane the space plane can continually make sure that uh, it remains powered if that makes sense i hope that made sense uh, now we're just going to go ahead and add all the stuff to it using bill kerman and the new eva construction feature not a mod by the way in case anyone was wondering this is now part of stock ksp as you can see uh, kraken doesn't really like it very much I think there was actually an update, uh, like yesterday for me. I'm recording this on March the 17th. I feel like, I think there was an update that supposedly makes the Kraken attacks when doing stuff on EVA construction a little bit less likely to happen. I don't actually know if I've installed it. I'm just looking at the 
version number on the screen. No, I haven't got that version update yet. So maybe uh, if maybe if, if you did a mission like this, it wouldn't be quite as wobbly as it is for me now. I haven't downloaded the latest version of Kerbal Space Program just yet. Uh, but there we are. We, we've done everything, I guess. Uh, the booster is now ready to re-enter the atmosphere and has the means to recover itself. Uh, and Oh, actually, spoke too soon. We do need to add some fuel. So that's, that's quite crucial in the whole getting the booster to orbit itself. Now, I guess I could have deorbited it using the space plane, but it would have been a nightmare because, you know, the center of thrust does not anywhere closely uh, line up with the center of mass with these two vessels docked really awkwardly together. So I thought it would be easier just to have the booster use its own engines and its own fuel supply. And things are not going well, are they? Just looking at this screen, I thought it'd be nice to do like a nice safe uh, detachment of it by extending the robot arm nice and far away from the ship. Turns out that didn't really work quite as well as I'd hoped and it just made everything a lot worse. The, the fuel tank ended up clipping through the space plane. Luckily, um, it, it just clipped through. It didn't actually cause any damage. But uh, yeah, bit of a bit of a clench moment, you know? <laughs> okay, so now we can just undock that claw and then get everything to retract. I didn't program this thing at all. I just said, I don't really know how it's going to... Uh, uh, how we're going to need to move it in order to dock with the debris, so I'll just do everything manually. I guess I could have added a cal controller so it would actually retract automatically, uh, but whatever, you know, this is fine. And there it goes. There it goes there, and I'm trying to think if there's anything I needed to talk about throughout that whole process, but I think I kind of hit every point, even if I did, even, even if it might have been in a very disjointed manner that probably could have done with a retake. I think, by and large, overall, it was okay. So there we are. We've lowered our periapsis to be within Kerbin's atmosphere, 33 kilometers. A little bit high. Probably could have gone with a... Sorry, a little bit low. Probably would have been worth going for a slightly higher periapsis. Because as you can see, those temperature gauges, they are creeping up towards the danger zone. Uh, but luckily it was fine. We survived. Didn't, it didn't slow down quite enough to re-enter on our first go. So we're going to have to just swing around and uh, re-enter again in order to land. I said we didn't go low enough to re-enter on our first go. I meant we didn't go low enough in order to slow down sufficiently such that we wouldn't leave the atmosphere on our first go. Again, another example of when I might have chosen to rewind the footage, but it's very awkward uh, using this trackpad. I hate it so much. Luckily, I've only got five more weeks uh, with which I have to tolerate only having one hand for editing and stuff. Uh, and I have thought of a good way of enabling uh, Kerbal Space Program content. I've decided to do some console playthroughs for them. I'd be fun because I can kind of use a DualShock 4 controller and I've got a PS4 Pro hooked up to the old capture card and I've got all the DLCs and obviously the game itself <laughs> on PS4. So I feel like that might be kind of a nice uh, way of me being able to create Kerbal Space Program content easily and safely without having to use my right hand. With this mission, I it was just very awkward. So you might see kind of weird movements with the on-screen cursor. It might look okay because I speed this footage up, so it might end up looking like it's moving at normal speed, but the cursor might move in like weird jump patterns and at really awkward angles. And that's because I'm using a trackpad for the filming of this mission. So I don't know, I feel like, maybe, would you have noticed if I hadn't pointed this out that I'm having to play what you're seeing on screen, play this all with my left hand and a trackpad, would you have noticed? I don't know, maybe I should have kept my mouth shut, but it's also, it's interesting to know. If, did you notice? Let me know. And what do you want from a, um, a console playthrough? That sounded very aggressive, didn't it? I'm so sorry. I meant like, what do you want from a console playthrough? I was thinking just science mode, because the big draw for me playing on console is because it's the, it is, is to get the MUN base. Because on consoles, there is one feature that the PC version of Kerbal Space Program does not have, and that is a MUN base. Like, you know, you got in Kerbal Space Program, you've got the Island Airfield, you've got the KSC, you've got the Woomerang Launch Complex, and you've got the Desert Airfield. Well, on console, you have one more. You have a MUN launch site. You don't have it right away. You've got to get through the tech tree to get it. But I thought that would be a nice thing to kind of show off. Like, we've got to do science mode to get everything unlocked to get to the MUN base, and then we can do some missions from the MUN. I don't know, I thought it would be a cool thing to showcase. Uh, and I know science mode again, I've already done two or three or two, I don't know. I've done science mode playthroughs before on this channel though, and I've never done a career mode playthrough, but I just feel like career mode is just not very fun to watch. Because it's just a lot of dilly-dallying with contracts, and like, oh, test this decoupler again at this altitude, and I'm messed up and it's like, oh, I've got to do it again. And it's just not that entertaining to watch. I feel like with science mode, you can just say, right, 
today let's just go to Minmus and then we'll just go to Mun and then we'll just go to June and then we'll just go to Eve and there's no like fannying around like oh well, I want to go to Mun but I haven't got a contract I've got to take this tourist up to low cub and all that and it's just like I feel like career mode it's just not fun to watch it's not I'm not saying it's not fun to play I'm not criticizing that I'm just saying from a video standpoint uh, it's not really I don't think it'd be very good however I have been toying with the idea of maybe streaming career mode because for streaming it's different because although the mission itself might not be that fun or uh, to watch again to watch <laughs> uh, it might be fun to like have a bit of back and forth with the chat and it's just something that I can just sort of ramble on and just not really have to pay too much attention to the foot to the, the to the gameplay of might be a good a good format for a regular stream thing I mean streaming at the moment for me is very difficult because I'm very busy with my day job um, but I'm obviously can't do that very much at the moment because I've only got one hand <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of my job involves needing two hands and because I work clinically I need to wear PPE like gloves and stuff and I can't put a glove over a cast so not really sure what I'm going to be doing at work but it might mean that um, I'm going to be doing a bit more work from home which means that there's no commute for me so I get home instantly not an hour after i finish so i might have more time to do things like streaming and obviously usually when i get out from work i try and at least get an hour of exercise usually like a bike ride or a run or something and i, I can't really do that at the moment either so i basically might have a bit more free time now to do streams regularly maybe like on wednesdays or thursdays uh maybe wednesdays so i can say it is wednesday my dudes for all you guys that missed all the th all three of you that missed planet coaster on this channel there we go we can bring back the meme we can bring back the meme it is wednesday my dudes and in fact for me Wow, I said I was recording this on March the 17th, which is a Wednesday, my dudes. So there we are. Isn't this annoying, by the way? I tried to deploy the landing. Wow, he's talking about what's on screen. Isn't that novel? I tried to deploy the landing gear, but the front gear didn't deploy because it's like attached to a cargo bay, which means that the cargo bay doors have to be open. Like, I feel like it's clearly not clipped inside the cargo bay squad. Can there not be like an advanced tweakable to maybe disable the need for it to be outside of a cargo bay or you know have the cargo bay doors deployed for it to deploy maybe it already is is there i don't know let me know i'll probably just i'll probably just keep complaining about stuff that i don't even need to complain about where it die uh the end screen there we are abrupt ending left hand side is a link to the uh, the aforementioned mission where i took kerbal x to the jewel system the right is just a video chosen for you by youtube's recommendation algorithm oh i'm running out of time description patreon twitter instagram discord i posted a picture to instagram recently it's really funny and it's great but